Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, and welcome to the NCC Automation Seminar Series. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our uh, speaker today, Professor Hassan Hashemi from the University of Alberta. Thank you, Hassan, for accepting our invitation. Uh, we're really uh, looking forward for your presentation. Before that, uh, I would like to uh, say a few sentences introducing our speaker today. So Professor Hashemi is currently an assistant professor at the University of Alberta and uh, the director of network optimization, diagnosis and estimation or an abbreviation node laboratory. Uh, he received his PhD in mechanical and mechatronic engineering in 2017 from University of Waterloo in Canada. Uh, and before joining Alberta, uh, he was a visiting professor at the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, uh, a research fellow at Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and a postdoctoral fellow at the University of uh, Waterloo between 2017 and 2018. Uh, he's mainly focused uh, uh, on distributed and fault tolerant control, automated driving systems and cooperative intelligent transport systems. So uh, thank you again, Ehsan, and uh, stage is yours, uh, please. Uh, thank you, Light, for uh, the introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ehsan, uh, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Albert. Uh, today's presentation is mostly on state estimation for connected and automated driving systems. Uh, so, as I mentioned, I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Alberta, and I'm the director of uh, Node Lab. And the research topics that uh, my group is working on are distributed estimation and controls, and also connected uh, automated driving uh, systems. Uh, first, I'm going to give you a recap about the active projects that we are doing and uh, we are dealing with. The first one is uh, related to intelligent transportation and the application of distributed estimation for intelligent transportation. Uh, this is mostly on the application of using infrastructure for, autonom for autonomous vehicle control and also motion planning. How we can improve the, the accuracy of the map or the accuracy of the occupancy map using the infrastructure sensors to avoid uh, any uh, dangerous situations. And the other one is uh, related to augmented localization and cooperative estimation using again a V2I uh, connectivity and also infrastructure that uh, based on the camera, based on the stereo camera sensors can on the fixed infrastructure and communication with the vehicles can be improved the, the localization, especially for the urban driving scenarios that we might have the GPS denied areas. Uh, we had a good progress so far and it's also a part of, on, of our ongoing research. And uh, most importantly, V2X for emergency and pedestrian post estimation. If a pedestrian uh, is far behind the view of the vehicle due to occlusion, Again, again, in a control environment, let's say the university campus or a, a part of a downtown area, can we use V2X to improve the uh, safety and to reduce the hazardous situation? This is a project that we are working on right now. Uh, the other projects that uh, we were also working in uh, collaboration with KTH and uh, groups with uh, Professor Johansson and also Wahid was uh, even triggered controlled and uh, distributed estimation in sensor networks. It was two different projects. The first project was uh, how to control a mobile robot in a sensor network with even trigger the scheme and uh, to, to improve the energy efficiency, reduce the communication and deal with the bandwidth of the system. And the other one was also dealing with uncertainties that sensors on the mobile robot have in order to localization or navigation. The other project, again, uh, under the umbrella of even triggered control was communicating uh, communication between the vehicle and infrastructure, a V2I, to improve the safety by using that or leveraging this information as a 
prediction component in the controller or as a just as a red flag to uh, improve the safety of let's say braking uh, we had some promising results there that using the 5g communication or even normal lt communication we can enhance the safety of the vehicle by informing that informing the automated driving system about the hazard that will happen in front of the vehicle in the path for proper and timely braking then the result was reducing the sleep ratio that i'm going to talk about that one and then increasing the maneuverability of the vehicle the third project that uh, uh, my group is actively working right now is on autonomous vehicle control and a part of that autonomous vehicle control is the state estimation which is the main topic of today's uh, presentation and there we are using onboard sensory data on the vehicle, including wheel encoders, including IMUs, and possibly including the, the stereo cameras to estimate the vehicle states, both in the longitudinal direction and lateral direction, and technically to estimate the slip of the vehicle. And the challenge there is uh, estimating the states on different road surface friction conditions. And the challenges that the model-based approach has, the challenges that the data-driven methods have, and how we can address them uh, by uh, combining kinematic-based approach and also bringing some notions from the Tari model to estimate the vehicle states. Uh, the other part of this project, as I mentioned, is also the control of the autonomous vehicle, and uh, the one uh, one of my students right now is working on. Uh, how different control systems in autonomous vehicles can cooperate interactively with each other to maintain or to satisfy different cost functions because each of these modules may come from different vendors from different suppliers and the OEMs are just trying to connect these let's say for uh, stabilizing the, the body of the vehicle or for stabilizing the wheel how we can deal with the conflicting control actuation between these and how we can use the opportunity of the game theory to, to uh, deal with these uh, conflicting control actuations and also satisfying to some extent uh, each cost function, which includes the safety of the vehicle components. So if you go back to the uh, autonomous vehicle control uh, block diagram. We have the natural human driver or the autonomous automated driving system that has the perception, that has the uh, localization data. And then the whole idea is controlling the vehicle or stabilizing the vehicle on, on, the different, on various surface friction conditions and under different uh, requests by the motion planner or by the driver. And then or doing so, we definitely need some measurements from the vehicle. By measurements, I mean the tire forces and the speed of the vehicle. And the speed includes two components, longitudinal speed in the longitudinal or in the direction of the vehicle, and most importantly, lateral speed or side speed at angle of the vehicle, which is a, a critical component in terms of safety. Of the vehicle. Unfortunately, the existing measurement methods let's say the gps and rtk although they're they're providing good accuracy in terms of positioning and also speed but the problem is they're not available in many places or in uh, urban canyons or due to the gps loss let's say in tunnels uh, therefore that's the place that the opportunity of v2i connectivity comes in but beside that we always want a reliable state estimation or a state estimator on board using only the onboard sensory measurements of the vehicle. And to deal with this, we uh, use the opportunity of combining the kinematic based method, which only uses the IMU data and some notions with some bounded uncertainties coming from the tire forces into the system and integrate them to come up with a, with a uh, solution for both a speed estimation and force estimation. Uh, but let's start with the force estimation. Uh, and I should say 
the, the existing measurement methods for measuring the forces are extremely expensive, uh, more than $100,000 for, for a set of sensors that you can install on the wheels of the vehicle to measure the forces. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to have it for the production vehicles or the existing automated driving systems. And unfortunately, these, these for, I should say that they, these forces are really important for the control system to know at what capacity are we driving right now? What is the capacity of the tire to, to push more or to request more to do some specific handling maneuvers? So this is the part that we need. And uh, the, the first part of the state estimation goes under the umbrella of the force estimation. The second part goes under the umbrella of the speed estimation. And when it comes to the force estimation, the, the big challenge is what if we have different actuators? Electric motors, engine with open differential, engine with uh, electronic limited slip differential. And uh, my group was also working and still they're continuing that on the uh, on developing, uh, let's say, a generic method that you can replace the actuation system at the core of this uh, block diagram. You can replace it with electric motors, you can replace it with engine and open differential, or replace it with engine and ELST, electronic limited slip differential. And uh, that's, that's the general idea of the block diagram that we uh, came up to, to estimate the forces. And in terms of uh, um, dynamical system, we are using the wheel dynamics at each corner and also the, the whole vehicle body dynamics in two directions. We are not considering the uh, vertical forces for uh, longitudinal lateral force estimation at this stage. And you can see uh, the, some experimental data. These are not initial results. This has been uh, tested on diff under different uh, driving scenarios and on different road surface frictions. They're well developed to some extent. And as you can see uh, on the bottom part of this uh, plot, we have several uh, challenging maneuvers on the acceleration level, the blue plot. And uh, the acceleration goes up to two meters per square second. And there are a bunch of fluctuations there. This is the capacity or the limit of the road, which means the road was a combination of snow and ice. And the driver or automated driving system requests more to pass that limit, but unfortunately the capacity of the tire was not sufficient to, to satisfy uh, the request from the driver or from the automated driving system. And even on this, under these harsh uh, driving conditions, the, the two first plots shows the lateral tire force estimation and vertical force tire uh, estimation that uh, shows uh, good accuracy of the existing module or uh, existing um, uh, estimation strategy that uses the wheel encoders, IMU data, and the rough values, uh, or let's say um, estimated values of the torques by engine with a bounded uncertainty to estimate the lateral and vertical forces at this point. And the challenge is, uh, as I mentioned, the high slip condition. High slip condition can happen under two circumstances. The first one is uh, requesting on a slippery surface or harsh requests on a, even on a dry surface to apply uh, or to request more torques. Then it leads to high slip ratio, longitudinal slip ratio, or let's say wheel flare. We have tested that in our test facility in Canada, in, in Waterloo. And on the top right, you can see the test facility that we have. Uh, it's original for the fire department, but on the bottom part uh, is a vehicle test facility. And we were able to test this algorithm on different road surface friction conditions. And as you can see, we have the normal asphalt, and uh, at the middle, we have the specific asphalt uh, as a patch. And we can put water on top of that or uh, regenerate the highly slippery conditions to, to do or to test these maneuvers. And the, the, as I mentioned, the challenge is in these areas that we have the high slip 
Why these are uh, challenging? Because this longitudinal sleep leads to combined sleep. Uh, due to the combined sleep effect, they leads to huge reduction of the lateral tidal forces. So this has always been a challenge, both for force estimation and uh, for the velocity estimation, due to uncertainties in the model. When it comes to the combined sleep effect, we do not have uh, information on the road surface friction. We do not have information on the uh, accurate uh, tire parameters. Therefore, these are challenging uh, regions uh, for the existing estimation solutions. But with the proposed uh, algorithm or the proposed uh, structure, we were able to estimate the lateral tire forces, as we can see on the, on the bottom right side of the plot. And even the estimation, uh, we're able to capture high slip, uh, high slippery conditions in a specific regions. And I should say this maneuver was a sort of a drift maneuver uh, with high lateral slip as well. Uh, but still we are working on that and trying to develop uh, or make it more accurate uh, on the different road surface conditions. But it has been tested on the dry road, on the wet road and uh, on the snow. The other part of the safe estimation is uh, on for autonomous vehicle is dedicated to the speed estimation, which means longitudinal speed and the lateral. And uh, if you may remember, I discussed about the challenges of the kinematic model and the uh, time model. The time model has always uh, this uh, dilemma of the tire parameters. Their changes due to the tire pressure, number of passengers and also, most importantly, road surface friction. On the other side, for the kinematic part, we always uh, we need to deal with the, the bias and the, the, the noises in the IMU due to the integration. So the idea was uh, integrating these two methods, integrating the kinematic method with the tire model-based method and uh, form a new system dynamics, uncertain system dynamics and use the estimated forces from the previous step, from the previous slide that I just discussed, to improve the accuracy of the speed estimation. And this is the idea. We use a Lucre tire model, a combined sleep lumped Lucre tire model, and uh, which has the relative velocity, which represents the sleep. And also the last equation shows the um, relative speed at each corner of the wheel. So the first equation represents the tire model. The second equation represents integration over the IMU at each corner of the vehicle. And as you can see for the tire model, we put omega as uncertainty. This omega term includes tire, uh, huge changes in the tire parameters and most importantly, road surface friction conditions. So by combining these two, we were able to form a new state or a new system dynamics that was parameter varying to some extent due to the variation of the wheel speed. And for the stability, we also use the affine quadratic stability theorem to prove the stability and it was, uh, it was proved and also it was working fine. And the other component was also uh, obtaining the, the gains of this observer, let's say a linear observer. Uh, through the performance analysis and through the, uh, the bounds on the uh, H-infinity norm. So we did that and also obtained the, the gains of this linear observer using the LMIs, but the LMIs were resolved uh, offline and then the results were used to evaluate the algorithm uh, for this vehicle platform. On the bottom uh, right side, we can also see the stability margin of the error dynamics with 30% of the parameter changes in, on the parameter changes of the tire model. So still the stability margin uh, is, is not affecting or is not uh, under uh, huge changes and still the aerodynamics is stable for the system. And these are some uh, challenging maneuvers uh, to, test the, to test the idea. Uh, we had the chance to test the idea on, uh, on a surface with uh, uh, different uh, conditions. 
You can see on the left side, we have the dry and the, on the right side, we have the wet surface. And the maneuver was turning the vehicle, passing through this limit several times. This is challenging due to two reasons. First is that this maneuver was a step steer, which means the steering is uh, applied to the maximum or to a certain limit and then it's, it's, it's constant. Therefore, this maneuver uh, suffers from low excitation, which is really challenging for the state estimation. The other one is uh, changing of the road surface friction without any opportunity to change the, the observer gains or to change anything in the in this system. Therefore, uh, you can see that there are lots of fluctuations on the torques on the tires on the second plot, and also lots of increase on the wheel speeds, omega, on the red plots. And these are the estimations for the longitudinal velocity and also the lateral velocity. Again, the driver requested maximum capacity of the tires. As you can see on the blue plus on the bottom right of this uh, figure, the, the acceleration stays around four to five, which means driving on the wet surface. And with lots of fluctuations due to the reaching to the tire capacity. Uh, but uh, this algorithm was able to estimate the longitudinal speed of what we have done so far. The advantages of the existing method is uh, it, it does not require uncommon sensors and road friction information. And uh, we were testing that uh, the transferability from the real wheel drive to all wheel drive, and also from the electric vehicle to the combustion to the gasoline vehicles, and also it's robust to tire parameter changes up uh, and, uh, and the estimation error was up to between eight to 10% of the error in terms of RMS. And this is the video that shows uh, how we tested the vehicle on the, uh, the snow, combination of the snow and to some areas ice condition. Uh, the state estimation is used for the control. There is no GPS connected to this system. And all we have done is using the force estimation and the speed estimation to control the vehicle on these conditions. Uh, th these are challenging maneuvers both in terms of control and in terms of the state estimation because of the road surface friction conditions and the high speeds. And what are the challenges that we are still working on that? Is the combined slip corner on highly slippery surfaces. And also most importantly, split mu scenario. Split mu scenario is a scenario that uh, it's, uh, let's say the right side of the vehicle is uh, on the dry road, but the left side of the vehicle is on the slippery surface. Therefore, the nature of a slip at each corner is different and the, the, the system dynamics suffers from the huge uh, variation of the uh, tire parameters for each corner. And as you can see on the blue plots, the lateral forces mu y drops significantly with the slip ratio. Therefore, this is a challenge for the model-based uh, slip estimators. So the idea that uh, we came up with was using redundancy in the system. By redundancy, I mean, we have uh, each wheel at each corner of the vehicle that has the wheel encoders. And we can also map the IMU data from each, uh, from the center of the vehicle to each corner. Therefore, we would be able to uh, generate a corner-based estimator at each corner of the vehicle. Then use some sort of consensus between each corner to, to increase the reliability of the estimation. Uh, so we did that. On top of that, we assume that we have a, a rough GPS data, which means update frequency is uh, two seconds. The GPS is updated at least two seconds. And also the accuracy is, is really rough. It's uh, uh, plus and minus five meters longitudinally and plus and minus three meters laterally. So it's technically the GPS that we use in uh, most of the conventional vehicles these days, or even uh, with more level of errors. So we use four corners and also the fifth corner, which is coming from the GPS data, rough GPS data. Then we formed a connected or uh, some sort of consensus algorithm here. And uh, based on the graph representation we have here, we try to 
maintain the best performance, both for H infinity and H2 norm of the system by minimizing that uh, trace of L bar, L bar on top that you can see contains the Laplacian matrix plus a confidence level at each corner. And confidence level at each corner is technically coming from the sleep value, or let's say a sleep threshold at each corner. Where does it come from? The, the valuable data is the wheel acceleration or the time derivative of the wheel speed. Uh, because it to some extent shows how wheel is a state. Therefore, it, to some extent, it represents the sleep ratio at each point. Therefore, L bar is the summation of the Laplacian matrix plus the confidence level. And then we are minimizing this trace, inverse of the L bar, which uh, to, to provide, uh, or let's say, better H, uh, H2 uh, norm. And the cons we put the constraints for the H infinity or the smallest eigenvalue lambda one under the constraints of this optimization problem. And then uh, you can see the second constraint is related to the steady state solution of the consensus. It's a, just a linear consensus between each corner. And the confidence level uh, varies between a minimum and maximum level based on the wheel acceleration, or let's say based, based on the uh, reliability of the system coming from the wheel acceleration depth. So again, the whole idea is using redundancy to estimate the, the speed of the wheel. And this is the general structure. Again, as you can see, we have the linear consensus uh, scheme here. We also use ARCP as, uh, for the fault rejection. Then we know that the corner is providing, uh, let's say, faulty confidence level. How to evaluate that? Then injected into the whole algorithm. Uh, so that was an additional uh, module to this whole system. But this is the general idea of the consensus. And we also were able to test that experimentally, again, using the rough GPS data, or let's say low cost GPS data. And the idea of integrating, again, the, the kinematic model with the tire force model. And we tested that on the, on the condition that uh, one um, wheel is on the dry road surface and the other one is on the uh, ice road surface. Since we have the industry collaborator, we use their test facility to test the algorithm, and it, which represents the slit mu. And these are the results. As you can see uh, for the wheel speed maneuvers, the, the wheels on the uh, right side are experiencing flare, which means they have huge um, increase on their sleep ratio due to being on the uh, icy road. But the wheels on the left side are on the dry road. And we intentionally put the vehicle all both for the traction control and the stability control. We put everything in the off mode to see how would be the performance when the controller is off. And there is no limitation on the sleep ratio. And these are the results that we got uh, for the longitudinal speed. Again, this maneuver is challenging due to this huge sleep ratio, both for traction and both for brake. We not only experience this flare at the uh, traction time, but also on during the brake time. And again, if you look at this, uh, the lateral and longitudinal acceleration, uh, the automated driving system was not able to pass uh, three or four uh, meters per second uh, of the acceleration due to this uh, slippery condition. So as a summary, this uh, consensus scheme works properly and the redundancy helped us to deal with the combined state case. Uh, we, in this two plus, we just want to show how the, the, the type of maneuver affects the accuracy. M1 is uh, the uh, simple lane change maneuver. M2 is the combined sleep harsh maneuver. And M3 is a low excitation. And as you can see, we have tested that on with all wheel drive scenarios, front wheel drive scenario, because the, the, our vehicle is an electric vehicle. We were able to uh, put the actuation only on the front, only on the rear, or uh, for with the all wheel drive uh, scheme. And again, as it's uh, obvious from this plot, 
the highest uh, estimation error, even by this consensus scheme, is dedicated to huge or harsh uh, combinacy maneuvers for all-wheel drive. But the, the large error is due to the linear parameter varying observer that we had developed at the beginning. But with this new consensus scheme, distributed estimation scheme, you can see the huge drop in the estimation error from 16, 17% in the RMS up to 7%. Therefore, this redundancy helped us a lot. We also checked the performance of this consensus scheme on different road surface conditions with all the drive uh, actuation and also the rear wheel drive on the uh, right side of the car. And again, as you can see, and as we can expect, all the drive uh, pro leads to more estimation error due to having the potential of a uh, larger slip at each corner of the road. So uh, the second part uh, of uh, our research for the, the autonomous vehicle is dedicated to the control of the vehicle. Now we estimated the state and we do not want to use the GPS or let's say accurate GPS with RTK solution, how we can control the vehicle under different uh, surface conditions. Again, fortunately, we have uh, the access to the uh, test uh, facility in, uh, in Canada and in Waterloo in my previous uh, institute. And uh, we were and we are able to test the vehicle under different road surface friction conditions. And we put this automated driving system under these uh, maneuvers, as you can see uh, in the picture, that it's totally a combination of the snow, ice in some region, and the wet, uh, on the wet asphalt. And we tried to control the vehicle using the estimated states from the previous step, uh, not only to do the path following, but at the same time, stabilizing the vehicle. Uh, the motion planner and path follower for this uh, uh, vehicle is uh, using the LiDAR and using the camera. And we have some predefined path for this test track in the winter time. And the vehicle is supposed to do that uh, predefined path and occasional obstacle avoidance with emergency braking or emergency cord. And the whole idea was testing the path following and also stabilizing the vehicle at the same time. Therefore, we use the, the face portrait of the vehicle, which includes the side step angle and the yaw rate, I mean, lateral response of the vehicle as the state constraints. And also we use the combined state the tire forces. Uh, the whole idea for this uh, control structure is the first equation is representing the wheel dynamics. This is a part that uh, I should say is addressed uh, not really broadly in the literature. In the literature uh, the, for controlling the autonomous vehicle, recently the, the direction is also including the command of the tire forces, but the wheel dynamics has not been addressed really significantly in the existing works due to challenges, due to the sleep ratio and due to the nonlinearities that, the, uh, that this uh, new dynamics brings in. But we were able to bring that uh, and, and represent it in a new system dynamics that includes the effect of this wheel dynamics, which is the relative speed at each corner into the other states, which are the, the forces, which are the lateral and longitudinal states of the field. And most importantly, uh, we included the actuator bandwidth, the last equation into the system, which means based on the bandwidth of the actuator, we know that the requests from the control actuation wouldn't be applied immediately to the control, sorry, to the actuator. So uh, how we can deal with that? We included this uh, UA or U by the actuator as a new state variable in the whole uh, state representation of the system. Therefore, when the receiving horizon control wants to control or wants to generate the control actuation. It, it knows that this control actuation would be applied by delay into the system. Therefore, it uh, regenerates or it's, it considers that into generation of the torque at each point. And 
then uh, the rest was uh, straightforward receding horizon controller and the the, the whole idea was uh, First of all, we did some linearization around the operating points to deal with the nonlinearities of the tire and nonlinearities of the uh, common stick tire forces. But the idea was also at the same time, including the constraint of the states in this receding horizon uh, control, which is not a new thing. It has been done significantly in the literature. But the new thing here was including the wheel dynamics into the forces that will affect these states. And as you can see, if we did not consider the, this wheel dynamics on the, on the red one, the, the vehicle was passing the predefined envelope, safety envelope in many cases. But the black one, which is the control part with considering that wheel dynamics and considering the effect of the relative velocity into the, into the new system dynamics, we were able to, to put the vehicle always inside the safety envelope which is represented by this state uh, constraint uh, equation. So in terms of results, uh, we put in a nutshell, uh, we were able to follow the desired DRA by the automated driving motion planner and also minimizing the side step angle. As you can see, other methods or the existing vehicle stability control system uh, was not able to control the system and the vehicle side of the angle goes above 10 degrees. The limit for the safety of the vehicle, it changes, but it's something between six to seven degrees, not more than that. So, uh, but, the, but the new controller and the new model was able to control the vehicle less than three or four degrees. And in terms of control actuation, again, you can see with the combined system model, the blue one, we were able to, to apply less torques uh, compared to the pure slip tire model or the existing vehicle stability control system. Uh, the other part of uh, this control uh, project was also not using the receding horizon control strategy, but also uh, trying other uh, methods, uh, including the barrier function. Uh, the, and the contribution there was, again, forming the system equation, sorry, the system dynamics such that we use the barrier function as a function that deals with the instability of the vehicle when it reaches to the boundaries of this envelope. We define a barrier function for the yaw rate, and we also define a barrier function for the side step angle. And then by using this barrier function and also the vehicle uh, dynamics, we were able to uh, solve this uh, optimization problem, minimize the control actuation at each corner. And the stability was uh, targeted by the Lyapunov function for this nonlinear system. And the trajectory performance or safety, uh, I should say performance was uh, guaranteed by the barrier function, logarithmic barrier function. Uh, again, uh, this, this is uh, it's an ongoing project in our team and we have some initial results, uh, but still we are dealing with the huge variations in the road surface friction that will affect this, uh, the, the parameters of the barrier function, uh, the, the, the alpha parameter to, to tune this uh, function. Uh, another approach for controlling the vehicle that was also a collaborative project with KTH was uh, using the opportunity that the, that the game provides us to, to separate the uh, vehicle body control system from the path control system, or let's say separate the vehicle body control system from the path transit control system. Uh, that was a work back to 2019, 2020, uh, but uh, we were able to uh, control the vehicle by separating these two controllers. And what was the idea behind that? As I mentioned, uh, uh, from the viewpoint of OEMs, they may not have access to the all details of these control modules. Uh, therefore, we were looking uh, on, uh, for opportunities that if only the traction control system knows its cost function, but it has no idea about the cost function of the path plan, or uh, sorry, the, the path tracking uh, controller, are we able to control the, the whole vehicle? 
we were able to try and test it with the dynamical gain for this integrated uh, scheme and uh, then solve it based on the dynamical games, uh, non-cooperative game. And uh, we tested that on the high fidelity simulator, not on the experiment so far, just on the high fidelity hard time simulation. And as you can see, when you compare this dynamical game control with the regular controller approach on the top right, the, the amount of torques that has been applied at each corner is not even comparable with the existing receding horizon controller. And it's more, uh, it, it's less and provides more safety, again, to deal with the combined sleep characteristics of the system. In terms of the path tracking property, again, the error for the heading is way less than the receding horizon controller. And also the error for the trajectory tracking, I mean, the lateral error is again less than the receiving for existing receiving for control traffic. And lastly, uh, one of the projects that uh, we were working with a uh, group with uh, Professor Johansson's group at KTH and also Wahid was uh, informing vehicles in the platoon about the danger that will happen on the road. And the idea behind that was by this um, timely data that could be communicated through 5G and also some queuing mechanism, are we able to control the platoon such a way that, uh, or subject to uh, minimizing the, the sleep ratio? Why we want to minimize the sleep ratio? Because as long as we minimize that, we increase the maneuverability of the vehicle in the platoon if it needs to do some obstacle avoidance or it needs to do some cornering in the platoon, it provides more capacity to do so. So we use a regular, uh, let's say, uh, linear platoon uh, with uh, proved the string stability and we tested with this timely informative information from the obstacle or a sudden danger or immediate danger. And we tested that the different controllers. First of all, no communication. On the right side, you can see that they have lots of fluctuation, both in the sleep ratio and also unacceptable uh, behavior of the vehicle when we have no communication. But when we have communication, but, but with not queuing uh, strategy, we also improve the sleep ratio fluctuations, but still the values are high. But with the queuing property, and uh, giving some priority to this uh, urgent signal, which is coming from the front vehicle, then communicated to the uh, base station, then communicated to the whole platoon of the vehicle, we were able to minimize the sleep ratio. That's the part that uh, Wahid contributed a lot uh, to this project. And the, the, we, we showed the potential of using this V2I communic uh, communication to improve the safety. And these are some of, uh, as I mentioned, ongoing projects uh, in Canada and in my group. It's a collaborative project between my group and also the University of Waterloo, uh, Professor Kajapur's lab, MBS at the University of Waterloo, who was my previous supervisor, PhD supervisor. So we are working on the, on the University of Waterloo campus, which is a 2.7 kilometer a road with lots of intersections, uh, pedestrian cyclists, and we have this autonomous shuttle bus. And this is a, this is a really small scale urban scenario, urban uh, driving scenario for automated driving system. We are developing the uh, localization methods, and we are also developing the motion planners. And uh, as you know, the the huge challenge or the bottleneck for these urban scenarios is the dynamic environment, occlusion that may happen uh, uh, between pedestrians and the other vehicles in terms of perception, and also computational complexity. Uh, we, have, we may have different sensors, including the central LIDAR, blind spot LIDAR, how to fuse this information effectively, and how to improve the computational complexity of the system. For real-time motion planning and real-time control, these are the challenges that we are dealing with right now between my group and uh, uh, MDS lab at the University of Waterloo. And uh, as you know, we are experiencing a harsh weather condition here in Canada, 
So uh, the, the, the idea is controlling the vehicle and testing the motion plan on different road surface conditions. And this is a place that uh, the idea of communication or connectivity between the infrastructure and the vehicle kicks in. Uh, we have some cameras on a specific uh, um, infrastructure to, this is the plan we are developing that, we have not developed that, but we are designing uh, this system to, to localize the vehicle and then through communication to improve the local or enhance the localization of the ego vehicle uh, as a uh, local perspective. The challenges, as I mentioned, are the model parameters, pedestrian occlusion, and opportunities is again V2I connectivity and sensor health monitoring and augmented visual inertial navigation. So, uh, what are the Last research that we are going uh, or we are continuing right now is the continuation of the project that we had uh, for the automated driving system. And right now we are working on the projects to first to study or explore what will happen during takeover between the automated driving system and human. Let's say the takeover for automated driving system, it, it's, it's inevitable. Let's say for that 10 or 15 seconds, that, the standard has not been established really well yet. But for that, during the takeover uh, scenario, what would happen between a natural driver and automated driving system without knowing the cost function of each other? And also enhance the stability uh, when an automated driving system kicks into the road with a natural driven vehicle. And again, the challenges are the road surface friction and also uncertainties in the model parameters. So uh, lastly, I should thank uh, my students and the group, uh, the, the wonderful group that I have, and I had this chance and opportunity to work with them, and they're working really hard to make this happen. We are still in the exploration stage, and uh, I should really thank them for all of contributions that they have made, all both the students and also the visiting scholars. And also we have the government and national partners in Canada. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Eslan, for the uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, 